Hey, it's Chris here, and today I want to show you how to use the ever useful Swift UI list component. Now, this is great for displaying scrollable lists of data, and it's also got some useful built in functions. So, let's take a look at this. First, we're going to start off with a very, very simple example. We are just going to have a list of, well, not a list, but an array of items. So, I'm going to say item one, and then let's just do three items. So, we got item two. And then we have item three. Now, if we wanted to display this in a scrollable list, let's go ahead and remove the V stack here. And we are just going to write list. And we're going to have to tell it what items we want to display. So we're going to go items. And furthermore, because these are just simple strings, the list component needs a way to identify between um, each of the items. So there's also an ID parameter that we have to specify. Now, there are certain, if you're displaying, let's say, a structure or a class that has an ID, then the list component is smart enough to just use that as the unique identifier. Now, because we're displaying a list of strings, then we explicitly have to tell what property can the list component use to tell them apart. So we are going to say, self and you write it like this backslash dot self and that's basically saying you can tell them apart by just looking at the string and then you open up a pair of curly brackets and there is one parameter in here and you could put any name here let's say i want to use i and then you use the uh, keyword in and what this will do now is for every item in this collection so there's three items it is going to display that item using whatever code you put in here. So this is um, each row, All right? So let's say we want to display the actual item in a text element. So then I would just use uh, the text component and I would put I because it's going to loop through this array. And then for each um, item, it's going to put it into I and then it's going to execute this for every single item in that collection. So there you go, you see that. Now we're gonna do a little bit of more complex example in just a second. I'll show you using a structure and um, with an ID property, so then you wouldn't have to specify this. But before we dive into that, I do wanna show you a couple more fun modifiers that you can add. So for example, if you type in list, there are all of these different ways to customize the list. For example, if you don't want separators, you can go ahead and change this to hidden. And then in the preview, you'll see there are no separators. But take note, some modifiers you add to the row and some modifiers you add to the list component itself. For example, list style is one that you add to the list component. So if we take a look at plain, for example, then you still get the scrollable list, you just don't get the styling that it came with. For example, grouped, this is a different look again. So you could have different groups of lists. So this is the default look. Let's do a slightly more complex example now. So I have prepared a little bit of code here. So first of all, I'm going to paste this right here. This is a new struct, it's just called item. Notice that it has the property name and it has a, an ID property. So it also conforms to identifiable. So this, um, when we go through a collection of instances of this item, the list will know, okay, it's identifiable. So I know to look for an ID property, which we have assigned a unique identifier. That's what this UUID is. So UUID is it's just a randomly generated unique identifier. So we're assigning an instance of that into ID. So we're going to get rid of this array of items. And instead, we're going to create a few of these instances instead. Let me again paste some code here. We're going to put that right there. Okay, so what do we have? We have an array just like last time. It's named items. But this time, we're creating instances of this struct right here. So we don't need to specify the ID because this is already generated and assigned right when you create this instance. And here now, you you don't even have to specify 
that ID parameter in the list because it knows this is identifiable. It's going to go look for this ID. And now if you want to display, let's say the name property, you would say I dot name, right, to access this. So now if we wait for this refresh, you have item A, B, and C. Another useful thing that uh, you can do with the list component is, for example, swipe actions. So this is very, very common in iOS apps. You're probably used to using this. Uh, let's try to specify the direction we want to swipe from. And typically that is trailing, right? And oops, there we go. So this is basically saying that we want to be able to swipe and um, open up or display some actions on the right hand side. And the way you display those actions is through a button. So for example, we can say edit and then the action would be, you know, uh, we'll, we'll add a to do for now. And so here you'd be able to swipe and reveal that. If you wanted to put multiple actions, you just have multiple buttons. And if you wanted to, let's say, display an icon instead, you could because, you know, you, you know how to use buttons. I don't need to t uh, tell you about that, right? So the action is there, the label you would just put. And I ended up telling you anyways. <laughs> so just in case you didn't know how to, hey, how come it's not showing up? Um, edit, oh, sorry, this would be a pencil. Be like that. Okay, and so that's how you use a Swift UI list component. I hope that was helpful.